It's been there for over 3 billion years. But now, some of the Earth's oldest crust is falling apart. Today, our continents seem stuck in place. But over a long, long time, they've moved and shifted around a lot. It's all thanks to tectonic activity, which makes part of Earth's surface slowly slide around like pieces of a giant puzzle. Some of the most stable parts of these puzzle pieces are called cratons. Cratons are super old and strong sections of rock that form the roots of continents and keep them together. The North American Craton is one of them. It makes up a big part of the United States, about half of Canada, and most of Greenland. Scientists have singled out about 35 of these big ancient cratons around the world. They mostly stayed in the same place for hundreds of millions of years because of how strong they are. But in 2014, they discovered that cratons might not be as indestructible as they thought. Some cratons had lost parts of their strong roots because of certain geologic processes and became thinner. It looks like cratons could become less stable if they go through more tectonic changes. In 2024, scientists at China University of Geosciences analyzed an ancient landmass called the North China Craton, or NCC for short. They wanted to learn more about how some of Earth's oldest rock regions can break apart. This process of cratons disintegrating is called decratonization. The NCC is so interesting to study because it has three main parts – the Western Bloc, the Eastern Bloc, and the Trans-North China Orogen, a zone that lies between the two blocks. Scientists found that during the Mesozoic era, the Eastern Bloc lost its deep ancient roots because of the strong Earth movements called tectonomagmatic events. So scientists wanted to see exactly how the processes in the mantle and the movements of Earth's plates led to the breaking down of the NCC. They created 4D models showing how the NCC's shape changed over time, including its surface shape, how its layers stretch, and the way earthquake waves move through it. They found that a section of the tectonic plate slid beneath the craton and then began to roll back. This rolling and stretching made the strong rock thin out and eventually lose stability. All this started around 200 million years ago, back during the Jurassic period, when dinosaurs were rocking the world. The North China Craton isn't the only place where this decratonization process can happen. Other cratons, like those in North America, South America, and China's Yangtze region, may have gone through similar changes. Scientists say this shows how the continents on Earth have slowly changed and evolved over billions of years. And it looks like, when it comes to geology, there's no place that is 100% safe from changes. But it's no cause for alarm. You don't notice this, but our planet never stops moving and is perfectly normal. But sometimes, this movement still brings dramatic changes. In 2017, Scientists made an official announcement that Zealandia can be called a new continent. The continental shelves of this mysterious continent are lying at a depth of around 3,280 feet below sea level. The nearest oceanic crust dives even deeper, at 9,800 feet below that. Geologists have gone deep down to collect rocks from the ocean floor. They have found that, unlike the nearby oceanic crust, which is made up of fresh basaltic rocks, the crust around New Zealand is a mix of ancient granite, limestone, and sandstone. All this screams continental crust. Plus, scientists have discovered a narrow strip of oceanic crust that separates Australia from the hidden land of Zealandia. It means these two are separate continents. 85 million years ago, Zealandia decided to break free from the supercontinent Gondwana. Millions of years later, the mighty Pacific Plate, the heavyweight champion of tectonic plates, decided to take a dive beneath Zealandia's continental crust. And that's how the root of Zealandia, that connection to its continental crust, broke off and went into the depths below. And that's not all the tectonic news from this part of the world. 120 million years ago, Australia and Antarctica were a single piece of land. They went their separate ways, but Antarctica didn't leave empty-handed. Today, there's an oceanic plateau in the Indian Ocean. Long ago, it was connected to another lost continent, the Kerguelen microcontinent. Scientists believe that it made a land bridge between India and Antarctica. To find out what it was like, 
we can look at a tiny archipelago in the southern Indian Ocean. These islands are all that is left of the ancient landmass. They have a cold climate and feature glaciers because they're so close to Antarctica. But in the past, the weather here must have been temperate with plenty of rainfall. The animals and plants would have been similar to those that live in tropical regions today. Another lost and found continent isn't hiding in the ocean, but under Europe. It's called Greater Adria, and it collided with Europe and started to sink under it around 100 million years ago. Today it lies beneath Italy, Greece, and the Balkans. Its size and even shape match that of Greenland, the world's largest island. Greater Adria is no longer visible, but it left some clues. Part of it was embedded in the Alps. The other chunks are part of present-day Italy and Croatia, on the other side of the Adriatic Sea. Limestone rocks from the former continent started to change once they were under the European landmass. Great heat and pressure spread over tens of millions of years changed their structure. And that's when the limestone left the chat and the marble took its place. Greater Adria wasn't a solid piece of land like the big continent we see today, but more like a giant shallow shelf underwater. Over time, sand, mud, and other stuff settled on this shelf and slowly turned into rock. Greater Adria might have been a little like Zealandia or the Florida Keys, a chain of small islands sitting in a shallow sea. Above the water, there were probably lots of little islands and archipelagos, and beneath the waves, there were colorful coral reefs filled with marine life. If you lived back then and had a scuba tank, it would have been an amazing place to dive and explore. So, with all the things going on with the Cratons, who knows? We could see a new continent in the future. Plus, studying the Earth's crust even deeper can change history as we know it. Scientists in Copenhagen have made an amazing discovery about the real birthplace of Scandinavia. And it's not where we thought. After studying sand and rock from remote parts of Finland, they found out that Scandinavia's roots actually came from Greenland over 3.75 billion years ago. This means the area where Nordic countries are now is 250 million years older than the scientists had previously believed. And we now know, thanks to the tiny crystals called zircons, found in Finnish river sands. When scientists look closely at their chemical makeup, they realize the age of crystals matched the rocks found in Greenland, not Scandinavia. They use special techniques to analyze elements, like uranium, lead, lutetium, and hafnium, and discovered that Scandinavia's rocky base most likely broke off from Greenland billions of years ago. A small seed of land probably started drifting across the Earth's surface over hundreds of millions of years. This piece eventually settled where Finland is today. Over time, new layers of rock formed around this seed and slowly turned into the Scandinavia we see on maps now. The same study could help us rethink how the continents on Earth first formed. The most accepted theory is that the continental crust began growing right when the planet was formed. But new studies show that the signs of continents only started growing a billion years later. The scientists explain that Earth's continents may have begun as tiny seeds of ancient crust in different places. These seeds grew over time, forming the landmass as we know today. These ancient seeds aren't just found in Scandinavia, but also in Australia, South Africa, and India. Scientists aren't sure if all these seeds came from the same place or if they grew separately in different parts of the world. So there's still a lot to learn, and scientists need to keep digging to figure out if all these ancient seeds are related to each other. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.